Hey, in this video, I'm going to be talking about two legends of the happy hardcore scene. First, I want to say a quick thanks to Gavin Greaves for your suggestions, but one at a time, eh? Well, actually two, because this month I've been researching the works of DJs Dougal and Gamma. But did Gamma steal Limelight from Dougal? I'll get to all that soon. But if you haven't seen any of my videos before, I'm Stuart, and I like to spend my time learning more about happy hardcore so that I can pass that knowledge on to you. I've got plenty more ideas for videos to come detailing hardcore history, so please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that I can let you know each time I post a new video. Would be really appreciated if you hit the like button as well and let me know down in the comments who you think we should do next. I've also produced a cheeky little DJ mix to go along with the video, containing some of the music I've collected over the years from Dougal and Gamma. It's available now on mixcloud.com forward slash Stuart K Music and you can check the links in the description for more info on that. In the meantime, we need to get into a duo who were household names of happy hardcore for over three decades. Let's do it. Paul Arnold Clark is a Northampton born DJ, better known as DJ Dougal. Born in 1975, just like Darren last month, Dougal has been in the game since 1989. I didn't realise that doing this was going to make me feel so old. To begin the story of Dougal, we need to head back to a time when he was on work experience with school at a local disco and PA shop in Northampton. One night, the guys were getting ready to set up a rig for an ESP promotions event run by Murray Beatson. They asked Paul if he wanted to tag along, and after getting permission from his mum and dad, remember this was a 15 year old kid, he joined the crew. When they arrived at Soul Drop near Bedford, Paul heard those ravey bass lines, and that was the night that literally changed his life. After doing quite a few paper rounds and buying a set of Technics 1210s, Paul decided to throw a rave at his school, hiring out the college block and selling tickets for £2.50 each. He involved his friends in flyers and promotion and boasted he was going to put a 10 kilowatt rig in the school. Nobody believed him, so he had to offer a money back guarantee if he didn't come good on his promise. The night arrived and that 10k rig literally shook the building, making the lighting all fall down and becoming somewhat of a local legend in the area. Paul, on the other hand, was banned from ever booking out the college block ever again. For a while after that, Paul played a lot of house parties for older kids who didn't want the traditional disco DJ. They wanted something cooler, so Paul played a lot of house music, presumably acid house at that time. While at a party one night, Paul bumped into Murray Beatson, who wanted him to play at his club night, which he did, starting off as a warm-up act for the bigger names. This relationship with ESP Promotions led Clark onto other events such as Fantasia and Slamming Vinyl and residencies at Equinox Milwaukee's, Helter Skelter and of course the one that the Dougal name became synonymous with, Dreamscape at the Sanctuary in Milton Keynes. That is, once Paul had become DJ Dougal. You see, up until this point, everyone had just been calling him DJ Paul, but he decided he wanted something a little better. So he asked his friends, and someone suggested Dougal because of the magic roundabout character with the long blonde hair. And in that moment, the name was born. The big turning point for Dougal came when he was booked to play the 1am slot at Dreamscape's 1993 New Year's Eve rave. A set packed full of the biggest happy hardcore tunes of the time meant that Dougal's phone was ringing off the hook with people wanting to book him. Not content with just playing the biggest happy hardcore tunes at the time, Dougal also went on to produce some of the biggest tracks, including Party Time with Eruption, Gotta Go with Mickey Skeedale, and Love of My Life under the alias Doctor Who. Did you know that Dougal's dad was also a DJ, as was his sister, who played for seven years in a bar owned by Dougal? His dad is rave photographer Gary Clark, and the father and son used to go out raving together, watching big names like The Prodigy and Carl Cox. Given how huge he'd become, it makes sense that he appeared a lot on the Bonkers compilations, with his music appearing on 17 out of 19 releases and producing DJ mixes for eight, two of which went silver and one went gold. That's based on physical sales, remember, something you can actually hold in your hand. 
and I did. Bonkers 3, I had it on tape and it got hammered to death in my Maroon Fiesta. While we're on the subject of Bonkers, one half of the mastermind team behind the series, Hixie, joined forces with Dougal to create the record label Essential Platinum. With a catalogue of somewhere in the region of 200 releases, including label offshoots Essential Platinum 2002 and New Essential Platinum. Happy Hardcore was massive, but of course everything that goes up must come down, and the scene started to crumble, thrown to the side by most people for UK garage, empty raves, and a car crash in 1996 killing 29 year old Beatson. The giants of Happy Hardcore were left questioning what their next move would be, until Dougal was handed a CD by his ironing lady that her son had made. He listened to that CD after about six months, when it had been sat forgotten about. From one sound on that CD that Dougal couldn't work out how it was made, he decided he wanted to meet that man. That man's name was Matt Lee, now known globally as Gam. Matt was a huge fan of Happy Hardcore ever since his stepbrother gave him a Hardcore Heaven tape. It was fast, it was happy, it was feel good, and it was exactly the type of music that Matt had been looking for. After a year of obsessively listening to Dougal's Bonkers 7 CD, Matt found out that his mum was Dougal's ironing lady. He was starstruck and was invited to go over to Dougal's studio. While there, one of Dougal's engineers handed Matt a cracked copy of Reason. Aren't we glad he did? Then one day, sitting in his bedroom, complete with bum fluff beard, the door opens, and in the doorway stands Dougal. To young Matt, who idolised Dougal, it must have been like eyeball Paul walking in. I read, to Dougal, it was like walking into a troll's cave. Like he was in danger. They talk about the tunes that Gamma's been making and Dougal suggested that they should make a tune together. The next thing you knew, Gamma was making music with Dougal, then they were off to the mastering house to get their tune mastered. That was the beginning of a very special relationship for the pair, and part of a huge change in what became rebranded the UK hardcore scene to try and detach from the stigma of the happy hardcore name. Dougal passed Gamma a CD and told him this was the sound that was about to blow up. The CD was filled with tunes by duo Breeze and Styles, and it was happy hardcore infused with trance sounds. As he worked his way to the top of Hardcore Mountain, Gamma worked with many other artists, including hardcore legends Hixie and Darren Styles, who, if, if you didn't know, we did a video about last month. You should definitely check that out if you want to know more about him. With Styles, Recon, Dougal, Breeze, and Wizkid, he founded Together We Rise, putting on raves as they all showed the same vision for the music and all had superb production values. This led on to the formation of the record label by the same name, which allowed the tight-knit group to release more music fitting with the direction that UK Hardcore was heading. Gamma was adored by the scene, an ambassador even for UK Hardcore. He picked up awards for Song of the Year and Best DJ at the Hardcore Heaven Awards and won Hardcore DJ of the Year between 2008 and 2012. 2010 award being shared with Dougal. I personally enjoyed seeing some of the content that he created on YouTube. There's one video where Dougal and Gamma travel to the late Squaddy's house to create a track for their upcoming Clubland Extreme mix. There's a lot of vlog style content on Dougal Gamma Official. But my favourite Gamma video had to be from Gamma's own channel. It was called Studio Mix Number 2, Do You Want to Build a Snowman? where he demonstrated an enormous amount of skill as a DJ. He mixed UK hardcore with trap and dubstep, scratched vocals with perfect precision and created a 23 minute energetic mix that finished by asking the question in the title. If that's building a snowman then... Yes. I want to build a snowman. Talking about that video, Kutsky even had this to say. Gamma is known as one of the most prolific producers in the UK hardcore scene. And I think sometimes the talk of how great his productions are overshadows what an amazing DJ he is. Not just in the hardcore scene, but in the world of turntablism. But then something went wrong. 
You see, Gamma had discovered something massive, and by just pitching up other genres and throwing them in the mix, he could create something interesting and relatable to those who didn't normally listen to his music, enticing them to join his party. Unfortunately for Gamma, this new way of being creative seemed to alienate some of his die-hard UK hardcore fan base, who thought he was selling out or turning his back on the genre. The online hate came and Matt took it very personally, biting back by responding and from what I read, spiralling into depression. He was playing the same sets and making the same music, constantly worrying about upsetting his fan base and that made him miserable. He wanted to spread his wings, he wanted to make music that made him happy. Gamma decided the best way to deal with his situation was to dust himself off and stop caring what the haters think. It was time for a change and teaming up with Darren Styles once again, the pair got to work on a Jack Hugh bootleg that was received very well, opening doors to new opportunities for them both. They also remixed Porter Robinson's Sad Machine, which was massive, especially in the USA, where a new audience is emerging as dance music is being discovered more. Gamma has gone on to work with Keizo to produce multiple hits, including the songs Forever and Over the Edge, had a release on Armada Music, played EDC Las Vegas, Perucaville, Ultra Music Festival and Tomorrowland and released an impressive catalogue of music on the label Monster Cat, including the Drop EP, with the title track becoming one of the most played festival dubstep tracks of 2018 with 11 official remixes. When he plays Happy Hardcore now, it's to festival crowds, who are more about face painting than threatening to kick your teeth in if you play another dubcore track. He doesn't class himself as part of the UK hardcore scene anymore, but then again, he doesn't need to. He's expanding on those who stayed by adding fresh ears with open minds. So what happened to Dougal while Gamma explored America? Recently, Dougal's been spending a lot of time in Australia with the 170 crew, headlining Atlantis for them and also performing at Knockout Outdoor, Enter the Arena alongside greats such as Hixie and Joey Riot. He has also been doing a lot to keep the rave alive closer to home here in the UK with events for Ravers Reunite, A Lost Weekend and The Ultimate Gathering, with The Ultimate Getaway in Magaluf being a highlight for the happy hardcore movement back home. Dougal has also turned his hand to producing in other genres, with a house track signed to Parlophone called Tell Me Why, under the alias Outcry, and another as part of the group Beyond Therapy with vocals from Angie Brown. In 2017, Dougal works with Gamma and Darren Styles to release the single Party Don't Stop on the Monster Cat label, followed in 2018 by Burning Up in collaboration with the video game Rocket League. Recently, he was back in the studio again with Gamma, which can only mean more bangers to come, just not in time for the release of this video, which comes with a mixtape, which you can stream now at mixcloud.com forward slash Stuart K Music. So I guess you want an answer to the question now that I've presented my research to you, or was the title just clickbait? From what I read, I would say no, Gamma didn't steal the limelight from Deagle. My understanding is that Deagle is one of the original fathers of Happy Hardcore, and always will be. Gamma was discovered by Deagle, and they have a connection. They can create music that we all love, but they both had different visions for where their lives would end up. That seems like something else that's unlikely to change. I applaud Gamma for everything he's doing to push the boundaries and wow us with his creativity. For me, it's a breath of fresh air where so many stick within the lines. Gamma steps outside them like an excited four-year-old with a crayon. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it to the end. I really enjoyed learning more about the works of Dougal and Gamma this month, and I hope you enjoyed it too. If you did, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. Don't forget, the Dougal and Gamma inspired DJ mix is available now over at Mixcloud. I'll leave the link in the description for you. Drop it in the comments. What's your favourite track by Dougal or Gamma or, or both? And let me know who you think we should do next. See you next time.